Today we are going to read the book, The Girl Who Never Made Mistakes. Hmm. I make mistakes every single day, and you're going to see me make mistakes, and I'm going to keep doing them because mistakes are proof you're trying. So I try every day, and I still make mistakes every day, and you're going to see it. I promise you will see it. So we're going to read about the girl who says she never makes mistakes, so that's strange to me, but we're going to find out. So over here, what we're going to do with this book today is we are going to be finding the main idea of the story. When we talk about main idea, main idea is what is the story mostly about, okay? That's what we try to figure out with main idea. So um, what what are they, what's the message sometimes too that the author is telling us is another way to think of uh, main idea. Lots of times main idea is done with nonfiction books, but we're going to use a fiction book today, and that makes it a little bit different, okay? Um, when you're done with the video, so your, your idea for your language objective is you're going to write um, in the seesaw activity that I put in for you on a uh, main idea, and you're going to do the work in seesaw, and then I want you to take paper and pencil and make a tree map. This is a tree map. Tree maps are fantastic for main idea. They're my favorite. So I hope that you remember these from last year. Okay. If not, I'm going to show you how to make one right now. Okay. So the girl who never made mistakes. Here we go. For Beatrice Bottomwell, Friday began like any other day. She matched her socks, and of course, she put her shoes on their proper feet. She remembered to feed her hamster Hubert his favorite food, broccoli. And when she made a sandwich for her brother Carl's lunch, she used exactly the same amount of peanut butter as jelly. Look at how nice that is. Here's her little brother Carl, and she's helping making him a lunch. I don't think my girls ever did that for each other. They look like they have quite the age difference, though. Maybe some of you have younger brothers and sisters you get to do that with. When she stepped outside to greet her fans, she didn't forget to say good morning and thank you. They asked if she made her bed. She had. They asked if she forgot to do her math homework. Nope. What about tonight's talent show, they asked. I'm ready, said Beatrice with a smile. After all, her juggling act had won three years in a row. Most people in town didn't even know Beatrice's name. They just called her the girl who never made mistakes. Because as long as anyone could remember, she never did. Unlike Beatrice, Carl made a lot of mistakes. He ate his crayons and drew with his green beans. I wonder if that works. He danced with his hands and played the piano with his feet. Now, that's pretty talented if you can actually do that. Carl loved to make mistakes. At school, Beatrice was on a cooking team with two breakfast with two of her best friends, Millie and Sarah. To make their giant rhubarb muffins, they needed four eggs. Beatrice went to the refrigerator and carefully chose the biggest, eggiest eggs she could find. But on the way back, her legs slipped out from under her. The eggs went flying. Beatrice was about to make her first mistake. But she didn't. That was close, thought Beatrice. Sorry, Beatrice. I dropped a piece of rhubarb. Oh, at an it, Ellie. I think she's trying to say, don't mention it, Millie. But she can't because she has an egg in her mouth. For the rest of the school day, Beatrice could not stop thinking about almost making a mistake. Sorry, I'm having trouble turning that page. Okay, here we go. 
On the way home from school, Beatrice watched Millie and Sarah ice skating in the park. Come join us, said Millie. It's fun, said Sarah. Billy watched, Be sorry, Beatrice watched them slip inside on the frozen pond. Millie and Sarah laughed as they wobbled over on the ice. No thanks, said Beatrice. At supper, Beatrice barely touched her food. Is everything all right, kiddo, asked her father. I'm worried I'll mess up tonight, said Beatrice, and everyone will be watching. Worry? You don't make mistakes, he said with a smile. Beatrice tried to smile, too. Look at, she's very worried. Look at the look on her face. I don't think Carl cares. He looks pretty happy. After supper, Beatrice got ready for the talent show. First, she woke up Humbert from his nap. Next, she got the salt shaker from the kitchen table. Finally, she filled the balloon with water. The school auditorium was packed. Beatrice felt her stomach jumping around inside of her. Beatrice waited for the juggling music to begin. That's her, the girl who never makes mistakes, said woman. Oh, we know she'll be perfect, said the man. When the music started, she tossed Humbert into the air. Next, she added the salt shaker and finally the water balloon. Beatrice didn't miss a beat. The crowd clapped with delight. Beatrice noted something about the salt shaker. The specks falling out of it were not white. Uh -oh, look at what color they are. They're black. So that wouldn't be salt. What would it be? Humbert was so surprised by his sneeze that he grabbed the water balloon with his claws. Kabooey! Humbert, pieces of water balloon and pepper rained down on Beatrice. Did you guess pepper in your head? For the first time, as long as anyone could remember, Beatrice made a mistake. And it was a big one. The music stopped. Beatrice didn't know what to do. Cry? Run off the stage? The crowd sat stunned. They couldn't believe the girl who never made mistakes made a mistake. See all their faces? They're like, <gasps> Beatrice looked up at Humbert. He looked back at her. His hamster fur was soaked and speckled with bits of balloon. Beatrice let out a giggle and grew into a chuckle, and the chuckle became a laugh. The people in the crowd looked at each other and then back at Beatrice. They began to giggle, then chuckle, then finally roar with laughter. Beatrice and the audience laughed, and they, they couldn't remember why they were laughing. That night, Beatrice slept better than she ever had. In the morning, no fans greeted Beatrice. When she got dressed, Beatrice, for no reason at all, put a polka dotted sock on one foot and a plaid sock on the other. Beatrice and Carl made sandwiches. This time, they put the peanut butter and jelly on the outside. They called it an inside out PB and J. Lunch was messy and delicious. Later, Beatrice found Millie and Sarah skating in the park. They fell a lot and laughed. Now, people no longer called her the girl who never made mistakes. They just called her Beatrice. Okay, so we're going to make a tree map now out of this book. So, when we think about what that book was mostly about, when I think of what I think the main idea would be, I would think that it would be, don't worry about making mistakes. I'm going to run out of room. Okay, so I ran out of room a little bit. 
um, this is a reason why you want to do your writing before you draw your map. So if I would have written first, um, it would have all fit, but it's okay. Okay, so what's going to happen if we're worrying about making mistakes, right? She, she missed out on fun with friends, right? Because so we don't want to worry because otherwise you're going to miss out on friends with fun with friends if you're worrying about it, right? So if you're worried about it, you're going to miss out on with your friends. And remember, she was sitting at the table with her dad and she didn't feel like eating. Okay, she did not feel like eating. And then when you make a mistake, sometimes it can be funny. So if you're worrying about it, you're not gonna have funny mistakes, right? And another way to prove that we shouldn't be worrying about mistakes is it's less stressful. So um, that's kind of a little bit of an inference because it didn't really say in the book that um, it was less stressful for, stressful for her. But if you think about the end of the story, it talked about um, how she went out and played. She didn't worry about what socks she put on. There were a whole bunch of different fun things she did at the end of the book with her brother too that she wouldn't have done if she was worried about making a mistake all the time. Okay, so it added less stress in her life. So I hope you enjoyed the story. Go ahead and go on your activity now and you will find there will be two to, for, to choose from in your activities. Um, you don't necessarily have to do both. If you're like, oh, I have time today and I'm going to do them both, go ahead. That's fine. But you don't have to. You only have to do one. Okay. I want to see one of them done. Um, there's a sheet in there too and that says main idea and put the details in. So your main idea goes up here. Your details go here. These are the details of why we decided that this was the main idea. How does it support it? Okay, main idea, details. Okay, one more time, main idea, details. All right, then when you have that sheet finished, turn it into a tree map for me, someone I don't know if you can all make a tree map. Okay, have a great day, bye.